Uh, Barkhausen noise is a technique that's used to detect burn or thermal damage. And it's a complicated, fickle uh, way of evaluating burn, but it can be useful uh, if you do your homework and you get everything right. But here's one of the challenges uh, about the Barkhausen, using Barkhausen to detect burn. If you measure your Barkhausen signal, so it's called Bar BN for Barkhausen noise signal, and if we plot over here some arbitrary uh, axis of temperature, so this is the grinding temperature, the workpiece surface temperature. Now, Barkhausen noise signal changes with hardness, changes with residual stress, and it also changes with structure. So here's where things can get kind of messy. As your workpiece temperature gets higher and you start to get residual tensile stresses, you start to get softening, typically your Barkhausen signal starts to go up, 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 up. Now that's good. A higher Barkhausen signal means that we've reached a higher temperature in grinding and that we've got some thermal damage. We have bigger residual tensile stresses. But here's where it gets messy. At some point, we reach a temperature where we start to get rehardening burn or newly formed martensite in our steel. So we've crossed the austenitizing temperature. We've recrystallized the material. We haven't melted it, but we've recrystallized it. Uh, and now we have a new phase of material. When we get that new phase of material, all of a sudden the Barkhausen signal changes. And it may drop drastically and can be lower than the value that we had uh, originally. And then it can start to creep up again as we continue to get bigger and bigger residual stresses. Now, the Barkhausen signal doesn't just measure at the surface, it measures at some depth beneath the surface. So maybe we have some residual stresses, maybe we've formed the newly martensite layer, and we've gotten that drop. So where it gets messy is, well, if my Barkhausen signal is here, or there, or there, now if I'm way up there, now I know I've got pretty high residual stress. But what if my Barkhausen signal is right here, and it's a combination of material with residual stress, and it's material that has actually rehardened. So if we take the surface, maybe we have some rehardened layer, which will give us something down here for our Barkhausen signal. Maybe below that, we've got our residual stress layer. It hasn't rehardened, but we have residual stress, and it's a little bit of that, and the combination of the two puts us somewhere here. Maybe it puts us way down here. So now all of a sudden, we've got a Barkhausen signal that says either we have no burn at all, or we've got horrific burn. Which one is it? And that's where it gets tricky. And that's why if you just take single spot checking a Barkhausen, uh, it can be very ambiguous whether you have no burn or gobs of burn. And what I suggest people do is try to take some sort of profile around the periphery if it's a cylindrical part or along the length uh, where the temperature is increasing. And then based on that, try to get some profile to see, okay, is the signal increasing gradually and then all of a sudden gets that sudden drop. If it's increasing gradually and we get a sudden drop, we know we've got rehardening. But if all we do is just spot check that one guy, maybe we've got the sudden drop from, be, uh, from uh, rehardening, or maybe we don't have any burn at all. So that is one of the challenges of using Barkhausen to detect burn.